All right, so we've got a whole bunch of articles here about Tesla's latest move. And well, it looks like Elon Musk is shaking things up again. This time, he's diving headfirst into robotaxes with the brand new Cybercab. Their Wii Robot event sounds like it was quite the show. Unveiling not just the Cybercab, but also teasing a robovan and even showing off some Optimus robots. But let's break down this Cybercab news first. Headlines are going crazy about Musk rolling up on stage in the Cybercab itself. No driver, no steering wheel, no pedals, a fully autonomous vehicle, like something out of a movie with those futuristic gullwing doors and that Cybertruck look, you know? And then there's the price tag, $30,000. I mean, if Tesla can actually pull that off, it would be a game changer, wouldn't it? That's the big question, isn't it? The $30,000 question in this case. If they can actually hit that price point, imagine cheaper than owning a car, cheaper than ride sharing, accessible to so many more people. It could completely change how we think about transportation. It does feel like Musk is trying to outdo himself, doesn't it? Remember when the Cybertruck was supposed to launch? He's known for setting some pretty ambitious timelines, to say the least. And with the Cybercab, he's saying production starts by 2026, maybe even sooner. Right. Well, let's just say we should always be a little skeptical about his deadlines. But you have to admit, the sheer boldness of this announcement is pretty captivating. This isn't just about making a new car. It's about changing how we move around, how we live our lives. And he's making some pretty big claims about safety, too. He's saying autonomous vehicles like this Cybercab will be 10 to 20 times safer than human drivers. But one thing that really caught my eye was this inductive charging. What is that exactly? Well, imagine never having to plug in your car again. That's the basic idea behind inductive charging. It uses electromagnetic fields to transfer energy wirelessly from a charging pad to the vehicle. So you're telling me I could just park over a special spot and it charges. That sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. It's not as futuristic as you might think, actually. They already have this technology in some smartphones and even electric toothbrushes. The real challenge is scaling it up for something as big as the Cybercab. We're talking about making it efficient, dealing with range limitations, and of course, building the infrastructure to support it. Okay, that makes sense. But even with this really cool tech, Tesla isn't alone in this race, are they? There are already other companies working on robotaxis, and some of them have a head start. Absolutely. The robotaxi scene is getting pretty crowded. You've got companies like Waymo, Cruise, Zeus, even Baidu is in the mix over in China. And some of them are already testing their vehicles out on public roads. So how does Tesla plan to compete with these companies that are already established? What's their unique angle? Well, Tesla is putting a lot of faith in cameras and artificial intelligence AI for its self-driving tech. It's a different approach compared to a lot of their competitors who are using LiDAR. LiDAR? What's that? You can think of it like radar. But instead of radio waves, it uses lasers to create a really detailed 3D map of everything around it. It's a pricier system, for sure. But some people argue it gives the car a much better understanding of its environment. Tesla, on the other hand, is betting big on their AI's ability to understand the world just through cameras. Interesting. So it's a battle of approaches. We'll see which one wins out in the end. But for Tesla to really succeed here, they don't just need to perfect the technology. They also need to figure out all the complex regulations, right? Exactly. And let's not forget about those other companies that are already tackling those hurdles. Tesla is jumping into a really complex and rapidly changing world. And some analysts are skeptical about Tesla actually hitting that $30,000 price point, especially with how the EV market is right now. It's a tall order, even for Elon Musk. This cyber cab is shaping up to be a fascinating case study. We've got cutting edge tech, a bold vision for the future, and a whole lot of challenges to overcome. You know, one thing I keep seeing in these articles about the cyber cab is this full self-driving technology, or FSD, and I have to admit, I'm a little fuzzy on it. Isn't that already available on some Teslas? How does it connect to the Cybercab, which is supposed to be totally autonomous? That's a great question, and one that trips a lot of people up. Mm. While Tesla's marketing might make it seem like their cars drive themselves already, it's not quite that simple. Okay, so break it down for me. What exactly is FSD right now, and how is it different from what they're promising with the Cybercab? Right now, think of FSD as more of a driver assistance system. It's not truly full self-driving like the name makes you think. It can do some things on its own, like driving on highways and even trying city streets. But a human driver still needs to be ready to take over at any time. It's more like a really advanced cruise control, not a replacement for a driver. Ah, okay, that makes more sense. So the Cybercab would be taking that technology and, in theory, making it capable of driving completely on its own with no human needed. Exactly. 
But there's a huge difference between a system that assists a driver and a car that's totally driverless. And it's not just about technology, it's about getting approval from regulators, public perception, and most importantly, proving that it's safe. And speaking of safety, these articles mention some controversies around Tesla's self-driving tech. There have been accidents, investigations, even lawsuits. Do you think that could hurt the cyber cab? It's definitely something to consider. Remember those lawsuits from families of drivers who were in accidents while using autopilot? That's Tesla's other driver assistance feature. Those incidents really highlighted how Tesla's current systems have limitations and potential risks. So even though the CyberCab is being designed for full autonomy from the ground up, the public would still be a little wary because of these past problems. Exactly. Trust is a huge factor here. For the CyberCab to really be successful, Tesla can't just convince regulators that the tech is safe. They also need to win over the public, who are understandably cautious about all these self-driving promises. It's a big challenge, but then again, Elon Musk has never been one to back down from a challenge. And speaking of challenges, let's talk about the other big reveals at the We Robot event. The RoboVan and the Optimus robots, I mean, robots serving drinks at a tech event. What's next? Flying cars. It was quite the show, wasn't it? It's easy to get caught up in the excitement of it all. But those dancing robots tell us something important about Musk's vision. He doesn't just want to build cars. He wants to push the limits of AI and robotics. It's like he's building a whole world of futuristic technology. You've got the Cybertruck, the Cybercab, now the Rover Van and Optimus. It's almost like he's creating his own sci-fi universe. And that's part of his genius, don't you think? He understands how to tell a story, how to capture people's imaginations. But beyond the theatrics, there's also a strategic reason for branching out like this. What do you mean? Think about it. The electric vehicle market is getting really competitive these days. By moving into robotics, especially humanoid robots like Optimus, Musk is positioning Tesla as a front-runner in not just one, but two potentially revolutionary industries. So it's not just about selling cars anymore. It's about being at the forefront of the future, whatever that future might be. Exactly. And that future might be closer than we think. The articles mention the Robovin could carry 20 passengers. Think of the impact on public transportation. And then there's Optimus, which Musk says could eventually cost about the same as a cybercab. He imagines it doing everyday tasks, changing how we live our lives. It's both exciting and a little bit scary, isn't it? On the one hand, we have the potential for amazing advancements in transportation, automation, even artificial intelligence. But on the other hand, there are some valid concerns about jobs being lost, about safety, and about what it all means ethically to be using these technologies. You're absolutely right. These aren't just challenges for technology. They're challenges for society as a whole. And we need to be asking ourselves these questions now as these technologies move from science fiction into the real world. It really feels like we're on the edge of something brand new, and it's tough to wrap our heads around it all. But let's bring it back down to Earth for a minute. We've covered a ton of ground about the cyber cab, the text box, the competition, the safety concerns, and even Musk's big picture vision for Tesla. What do you think is the biggest takeaway from all of this? Is the cyber cab actually revolutionary or is it all hype? That is the million dollar question, isn't it? And oh, yeah. like always, the answer is complicated. I mean, on the one hand, you have this technology that could be totally groundbreaking. Just imagine a world where grabbing a driverless taxi is as simple and cheap as ordering a pizza. That's the promise of the cyber cab, right? It could change everything about getting around cities, cut down on traffic, and give people who can't drive themselves a new way to get from A to B. It's a compelling vision for sure. It is. But, and this is a big but, there are some serious obstacles to overcome. The technology, while impressive, still hasn't proven itself in the real world. We've got those valid concerns about safety, about regulations, and about all the ethical stuff that comes with autonomous vehicles. And then there's the question of whether people are truly ready to give up driving. Yeah, that's a really good point. It's one thing to be excited about the tech, but actually trusting a machine with our lives is a whole other story. Absolutely. So where does that leave us? What are your final thoughts on this whole cyber cab situation? I think this deep dive has been a fascinating look at where technology, ambition, and the future of transportation all meet. I agree. The cyber cab, whether it actually launches on time or not, makes us face some really big questions. Are we ready for a driverless world? What are the good things and the bad things that come with it? How will it change our cities, our jobs, our lives? These are questions we all need to think about, not just techies or industry insiders. It's a conversation that's relevant to everyone. It is. 
because the future really is closer than it seems. Yeah. And the decisions we make today are going to determine what that future looks like. That's a thought-provoking note to end on. It's been a pleasure unpacking all of this with you. Likewise. And to our listeners, thanks for joining us for another deep dive. We'll catch you next time.